بيجي 11 الصوب صار اه قرايبنا انا بقول له والله بقول له قرايب ثلثي كانت نايمة هي
killing the children and women in their houses. Innocent people and killing the whole family, destroying the houses of people. Now the houses, about one third of the houses of Gaza are already destructed. At least one half of Gaza people in the streets and in, uh, uh, in, in some shelters, which is unhuman by all means. We are talking about injuries. We are having about 10,000 injuries. At least one third of them are children. One fourth of this figure is at least women and elderly. Others are the members of families. This is exactly what we have seen, at least in this Shifa hospital, which is about 740 beds. If I'm talking about murders, the killed people, we are having nearly 2,000, 1,950, something like that. 2,000 is about being killed. At least, still, uh, one third or more is children again, and more or less the same number of ladies and children, children. You know, killing the people in their houses, in the streets, where they are playing at, at their houses, it was fairly a massacre. And it, it was some sort of aggression. There was a massacre in east of Gaza, Shijaya, in the camp, beach camp, where, you know, at, the, at that time, I remember about 11 children came to the emergency room. They came in pieces. The biggest of those kids is nine, eight, nine years old, and all are sheltered. They were playing in, in the front of their homes, and it was the day or the first day of what is called as Eid or feast. After Ramadan, you know Muslims, we have been fasting for one month, and after that month there will be some sort of feast for the children. In spite of the killing, you know, children know nothing. They were playing in the front of their houses, and at that moment, all of those 11 kids did. This is a party from others, other houses and other victims who were just walking around the area. And you know, Gaza has been exposed to a real massacre by the 21st century. Real mm -hmm. massacre. Killing children, killing women, killing elderly, destroying houses. As if this is the war against families. Killing. I don't like to give the number of families and the number of kids being killed. Or but it is each patient or each uh, person being killed or a murderer, we call it, behind this is a story. There are plenty of pregnant women and the fetus, even the embryo, the fetus in the uterus. You know, one lady in this hospital is here. I'm inviting you to go and see. She's in the uh, intensive care unit. You know, her uterus, uterus is completely disrupted. The fetus inside the uterus has received a shrapnel or some sort of, you know, something to kill the fetus, the brain matter was coming out. You know, it's a, a real, a real terrible. This is one thing. Uh, apart from this, the infrastructure of Gaza, you know, electricity. Now Gaza is without electricity. They destroyed, they bombed, the single, the only electricity generator in Gaza. It is destroyed already. And now Gaza without electricity. Imagine, imagine, if you are having no electricity, there will be no water. There will be no sanitary conditions for the houses. On this basis, you are thinking about destroying a complete nation. By the way, this nation, I mean Palestinian nation, living in Gaza nowadays, they will never destroy it. They will be destroyed. History is saying that. It, it, it's a real, it's a real massacre. Mm -hmm. And 30 days, people being bombed, being killed, and no active, active action taken by the international community, the respected international community. There must be loud voices coming and to tell those people, don't kill Gaza people, don't kill them. They are being, where are the human rights? Where are the ICRC? Where is it the WHO? Yes, we know, show some notice some sayings, some, but during the whole 30 days there was this continuous killing, continuous destruction. Even the medical staff and some hospitals has been destroyed. You remember at least seven hospitals destroyed. Many, many of the rescuers and ambulance drivers, in addition to their ambulances, has been destructed. Our hospitals in those days was flooded with patients. This hospital, as I told you, 740 beds. 
We have been extending to all the partners of this hospital. No more beds for the hospitals. Imagine the first day of aggression in one of aggression in Shajaia. We operated 50 patients in our 11, uh, in our six OR rooms. But two patients in, in one room, other patients in the corridor being operated, extending to some other places in the hospital. On the floor, we obliged to operate on some patients. Really, it was some sort of a challenge for us as medical staff working in here. It's a challenge for our people to continue. Because our hospitals and supply before this massacre or this crisis was very much restricted. Even we were, you know, in the reducing our routine activities. And when this massacre started, I did like Gaza people when they came to us in the administration of this hospital and they were telling us, please doctors, what you need, please go and buy. Yes, we were in, we were in need to buy sutures, to buy gloves, to buy gauze, to buy, you know, to, to, to treat our patients. It was a real massacre. And Gaza, imagine Gaza completely sieged. From the, the, the west is the sea. From the east is Israel destroying us and the north <coughs> and on borders of Rafa in Egypt. This is closed completely except a couple of hours when there is a humanitarian just let some people come and go in certain hours. It was like that. So it's completely closed. Nothing is coming in except in very sporadic occasions. So it was a real challenge for us, for everywhere, even our families. The medical staff in the hospital, they have been in this hospital for the last 30 days and their families, they are anxious about their families. The families are suffering. Some of our members of the families come into the hospitals and we are astonished to have members of your family being killed, being injured. So it was some sort of real drama, real, real sad story. I hope it will, human beings will never see such a story happening to them. And it had to be stopped by all means. It had to be stopped. Gaza people, Palestinians, I mean, they are human beings and they are very kind, they are good, like any other human beings here and there. They must be taken care of and to let them have the right. That's all. Okay?